And that's it. I was still their friend. I didn't say I was at war with them or anything. If they came into the kitchen and, you know, I could hook them up with an extra bun or something, I would. I just didn't go into that fucking feed. I could have gone into any different group I wanted to, and I pretty much stayed to myself and got away with it. Is that, like, for, for, I, I used to watch all those. I think I've watched every lockup and the Nat Geo one that they have. And that everything, and maybe... You know, all that, all, I, I watched that stuff. Yeah, and All that okay. isolation stuff and stuff was pretty much, I, I never saw that. Okay. I never saw that isolation stuff. I could lie to you and tell you I was hard. I was in a hole for three... No, no. When I got in there, dog, I wanted to do my time and get the fuck out of there, okay? Uh, I wasn't going to let myself get bullied. I wore, none of that shit was going to happen. If you smacked me, I was going to smack you back no matter what size you were. If you spoke down to me, I knew a way how to talk back to you without you getting mad. And I never came down to that. I fought a kid in there, Severino. I still love him with all my heart. And I beat up that white dude for fucking, uh, the dude I put the box of shit in his fucking drawer, that half a fucking retard, wannabe biker. And that was it. That I had no problems. And in the halfway house, I really had no problems. I just knew, listen, man, I, I was thinking this weekend in Minneapolis about what's going on right now, whether it's Animal Planet, the podcast, stand-up comedy, my family, the daughter, you, you know. It took 54 years to surround myself with the right situation. I'm no better than you or whatever. That's why I talk to you the way I do at the age of 28, because I want you to eliminate the waste. There's just a lot of waste. And God knows I did 90% of it. In no different way than just doing stupid shit. <laughs> This country, if you see the direction it's going, if you're young right now, I want you to strap your seatbelts on. I want you to focus. I want you to buy property. I want you to do as much as you can so you have as much security by the age of 40. Who knows that we're going to have Social Security? You know, when I was a child, they said there wasn't going to be no Social Security. You know, who knows? I'm 54. I'm thinking about Social Security. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Starting next year, I take lead of breakfast every day, 15% off at Denny's. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And he picks up the tip. And McDonald's, you get like a free uh, senior discount. Sure. But I, I the, the, the thing, you know, this morning I said something and Lee called me and he goes, it's the funniest thing. I said, you know, when I, I didn't watch the Oscars last night, but I watched CNN later on that night and I saw what had happened and the people, the Hindu who made the speech <laughs> and the other guy who boycotted it and, you know, it's like it's the Oscars. We're trying to have a good time, and you got to bring all that shit up. You know, enough. And they do it for what? To get the pat in the back. You know, I'd rather fucking get fucked in the ass by a midget than that pat in the back for me being brave, for sticking up to Trump. It's over. You know, I mean, what, what the fuck are you bitching about still? You know? And I was sitting there thinking about how I never, want, I never want to be around those people. Like, I, since I moved here, guys, guys, I don't... Tonight I was supposed to go to Doug Benson's uh, High Court premiere, which starts tonight, by the way, and it's a pretty good show. Doug did a good job. He, hey, he's smoking pot on TV. It, you got to take your hat off to the fucking kids. So when I'm, I'm on one of the episodes. He's got a great crew of people that are playing bailiffs. I think, uh, who else? Uh, Jessamay Peluso. Jessamay Peluso's playing one of the bailiffs, one of our girls. So, yeah, they got a, a, a great crew, so I, I wish them all the, the luck in the world. And you think about the journey he took. When I think about comedy, I don't think of myself as a good comedian or a great comedian or that I'm going to be re remembered. Or You don't see me going on tours or selling tickets like Dane Cook or nothing. You know what I like about that I did? What's that? The journey to get to the comedy store. I still can't believe it. The talent... With me, there's no talent. I'm just a fat fucking guy that grew up on a corner and knows how to tell a story. You know what I'm saying? There's no fucking talent here. The talent was getting me here. Like, how the fuck did I end up in California from Italy? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you went to school for four years. We've had this discussion. You've looked me in the eye and said, that school diddle got for you. You could have learned more in high school hanging out with four fucking uh, dudes who are nerds, you know? But the journey you made... That's where the talent is. That's where the persistence is. You came out here with a girl who came out here twice and left. You know, since we've been here, we've had people come and fucking go. The talent is getting here. 
it's not become for me it wasn't I don't see nothing in the comedy I like that I do comedy and I'm lucky I got involved in it but for me listen man before my mother died I knew I was gonna bust out of Northburg I love New Jersey I love everything it stands for but there was something about North Bergen that I know I didn't want to stay there. Completely understand what you're saying. <clears throat> I know there's a lot of people who understand what I'm saying, a lot of people who don't. And I appreciate a lot of the people who stayed at home today. I did something weird today. One of my biggest sorrows is the, da the damage I did in the Bender household from 1979 to 1981. It's, it's, it's unexcusable. You know, thank God Bobby talks to me. John talks to me from time to time who... I was supposed to move in with and yesterday when I got off the plane I went on Facebook last night to post some videos and I saw that prayers for his sister Renee and uh, I still remember moving in the house when my mom died and how she would cut my hair for free and I would go over there and she'd goof around with me and and a year and a half later she got a boyfriend you know who I knew and I can't lie to you, I kind of got jealous. You know, I was a 17-year-old kid. She was like my big sister who I had a crush on. And then she ratted me out about something, and that really destroyed me. So I, I did something stupid years later. It's not even worth talking about. And I pissed off the family. And then the father died, who I was just writing about in the book today, how he came up to me at the funeral, my mother's wake and said that it would break his heart if I didn't move in with him. You know, this is what I'm in the night before I'm going to bury my mother. It was just a weird thing that happened, and I ended up moving in with them. And then, you know, I was just too crazy for John. So when I found out the sister was in the hospital today, I didn't have the balls to call the hospital. I called her other brother, Bobby, and they're kind of at war, and I convinced them. I convinced them to go to the hospital and just take her hand, you know. Uh, and then I did the impossible. I I Facebook John because I don't have his number, and I said that I was I would light a candle for his sister and say a prayer, and uh, that I was really sorry for everything I had done all those years, and uh, you know I want to uh, go home and talk to him. And he said that he was not mad at me; that he was disappointed with me because in all the interviews I never mentioned him or his father you know and I said I talk about your father all the time but I think it's time that I go back there I go I know your mom hates me and I think it's time that I go back there and uh, talk to you I want to do something with you so um, he said absolutely wow what, what, can you explain is it like is it like a cousin is it like a bro like what is John Bender to you we're going in like fucking Marines, you understand me? Welcome to church, motherfucker.